you've been a good friend and uh, you've been a mentor of mine. I appreciate your counsel and advice too. So, really appreciate that. So we had some uh, very good decisions tonight. And I can identify with all of them a little bit. Uh, Father Ned, I don't know if you remember or not, but I think when you were a young priest, you gave a, a sermon about falling off a truck. Is that right? And it was a beer truck. <laughs> Going out country road, they didn't come back for you for like 15 or 20 minutes. I think. Yeah, we talked about the gravel and everything. So, all these years after you became a priest, when you were a young priest, I still remember the story about the beer truck. I don't remember anything about the gospel or God. <laughs> so, JT, I, I, you know, you do such a good job of, of emceeing, and I still remember the one thing you said that sticks in my mind: the, the three B's. Do you remember? The, Three B's. Be to the point, be brief, and be seated. <laughs> well, obviously you forgot those tonight. <laughs> and uh, you bring a good inspirational story. And uh, it, it, people that know me know I love sweets. And uh, I can't wait to taste your pizza. I don't know where I get them, but I'm going to get some of them somewhere. So uh, thank you for your great story. And uh, Coach Potter, you may not know this, but I, I look up to you a lot. Um, I, I did a, 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 a I coached league basketball and rugby league basketball, and now white basketball for my grandson. As a matter of fact, I lost a game today, too. <laughs> can't hit a last second shot with three seconds of beats. After a bad call, I might add. <laughs> Which I'm letting you know about, by the way. But uh, I, I, did, I did a summer camp for some kids, and, and I, I invited Coach Potter and talked to him. And I said, Coach, I want you to teach him something about basketball and, and something about life. And uh, boy, I tell you what, he had those kids' attention. And uh, I'll never forget that. I not only learned about life, but I learned, learned what I, all I didn't know about coaching. <laughs> So your knowledge of basketball is, is just tremendous. And if you don't know it, didn't see Coach Potter play here? He was a great basketball player. He was a super, super athlete, super player. He's also a very, very good baseball player. A lot of people don't know that. He played the NBC tournament for how many years after that? And he could hit baseball. So just a great athlete, but a great person. And you're an inspiration to us all. Thank you. I'd also like to thank some people that, that came here. Uh, first of all, Jim Barber. You're, you're just an inspiration for all of us. And, and the, the, the passion and the humanity you have has just really inspired me. I appreciate that. Dale and Alice Wiggins, thank you very much. You, you don't know how much you mean to my wife and I and my family. Um, you've been an inspiration, a mentor. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Mark. Ray Winkle, his wife Holly, and Mark. We, uh, I was waiting on somebody about years, about 15, I don't know how many years ago, 15 years ago, and I mentioned to the person that said, well, I need to, long story short, my wife mentioned it, it in, in the privacy of our bedroom one night that uh, I didn't quite have the muscle tone that I used to have. I was kind of, I was kind of windy. <laughs> So she knew how to inspire me. <laughs> so I decided to work out. And I was telling the person I was waiting on, that, yeah, I'm going to start to work out. And he overheard that. He said, well, where do you live? I said, I would. He said, well, I do too. Let's work out together. So we've been working out together at the Y for a number of years. And, but the, the laughter we've had and the joys, I, I, it means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. Bob Simpson, Ann Simpson, over here somewhere. Bob. Uh, also, a very good mentor of mine. I, I respect, I still think you're the best businessman I know. And I, I say that with all sincerity. So, but also, just a great person, too. I appreciate your counsel. And I say this every time, but Sister Charlotte, you're still the best teacher I ever had. <laughs> the coach that he says reach out to one of them, do the quiz line, and then, well, he reads or watches film or something. But uh, when I came to her history class, 
she inspired me to, to love history. And to this day, I, I when my free time, the free time I have, I read history books. So, and I thank you for that. I really enjoy it. I'd like to thank my, my wife. I met her in, in 1978 here at Newman. And uh, she worked at the library. <laughs> And I spent a lot of time at the library. She worked right by the pencil sharpener. And I sharpened an awful lot of pencils. But, but uh, thank you for, for 31 plus great years. You, you've, been a, you've been a great mother to our, our four sons, and I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. To my, to my sons, thank you very much. Uh, I've got two of them here tonight. Uh, Isaac and his fiance, Sophia, getting married April 12th. Good luck in your adventure. And to my uh, my youngest son, Jordan. Jordan, I appreciate it. I got to tell you, Jordan, about five or six weeks ago, he's over at the house. He's, he moved out several years ago. But he's over at the house, and I, I got my phone out, and he says, Dad. He said, people laugh at you when you get that phone out. That thing is old. I said, well, I know, but it makes a call, and I can receive a call on it. Why don't you get a new one? I said, well, maybe I should, but I really don't know much about it. He said, hey, what are you doing now? I said, nothing. He said, let's go now. So he went over to the Verizon store and uh, he hooked me up. So he got me all set up, set up the phone and everything, and uh, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Finally, to, to my parents. Oh, and my, my other sons, my oldest son, is vacationing with his, with his family. I uh, had three skiing in Colorado, so I, he couldn't be here now, he already had a plan. And my uh, my second son is the coach of North High, he's with his wrestler at State Meet. So, I know they'd like to be here, but I appreciate everyone, they do too. Finally, my parents, Jerry and Marianne, thank you very much. Said, uh, not to brag, but I think you did a great job raising us. <laughs> I really appreciate everything, everything you've done. You know, it was about quarter till 10 when I get up here, so I, I think by about 10, 30, quarter 11, we'll be done. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to take JT's advice on the three Bs. There's two instances that really stick out when I was growing up. The first was when I was eight or nine years old. I was playing video basketball. I was by far the worst team on a bad team, worst player on a bad team. And I knew it. I played my one quarter that I had to play, and that was it. My mother used to send my sister down, who was a little bit from our brothers, tell me quit picking my nose on the bench. <laughs> so I, didn't, I knew I wasn't very good. Well, after the season, she took me to an all-star game that a friend was playing on. It's a 12-year-old all-star game. I still remember it was Minnehaw Grade School. It was a practice game. They were going to a national tournament in Louisiana. We watched that game, and towards the end she said, you know what? You can be out there someday. I never thought about it. it never occurred to me. The worst player on the worst team could be on the All-Star team someday. Well, that's jump started my love of basketball. She'd buy me two basketballs every year and I'd wear them out. Go completely all the way through the rubber to the ladder. Jim Valvano, the former North Carolina State basketball coach, said, Be a dreamer. If you don't know how to dream, you're dead. Well, I dreamt a lot. And I did make that all-star team. Just decided no Antoine Carr was on my team. <laughs> and I started and he did. <laughs> That's about where it ended though. <laughs> the second time was when I was in high school. I think I was about a sophomore or junior. My dad took me to a Newman basketball game. At that time, they didn't have a gym. 
They were playing at Bishop Carroll High School. Mike Bear, Ted Bear, Pat Carney were all on the floor. Great players. Fun to watch. The crowd was loud, boisterous. The student body was into it. Fun atmosphere. I left that gym knowing I wanted to play for them. Well, I did. I played for Dave Skinner at Kansas Newman College. Coach Skinner taught me so much about winning and losing and how to compete. I remember about the third practice we had my freshman year. Back then, we're in NIA, so we start practicing like seven weeks before. We had like a million practices before, before we had our first game. At that third practice, there's a drill called St. Louis, and all it was is three on three, half court, man to man. And remember, the seniors are trying to make the freshmen cry and go home. I was a freshman. I didn't know that at the time. But a guy named Ron Nagy came up and set a pick on me. He placed an elbow right in my left ear, rung my bell. My man went around me and scored a layup. Dave Scanner was 6'9 and about 220, remember Dave, came and got in my face. Didn't say a word, got in my face. I said, hey, I said, nobody on that pick. Besides that, he found me. He thumped me on the chest. He said, that's your man, and he scored. I said, okay, I understand the rules now. <laughs> After practice, he pulled me over, he done a shower and stuff, he said, J.B., come here. I said, yeah, coach. He said, you know what? He said, excuses are like a certain body part. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. <laughs> I said, coach, I think I figured that out. But I understand. But it taught me something. Don't make excuses. He frequently said, basketball is life. And it is. It taught me a lot. Well, most of my time was catching splinters on the bench. I started a whole seven games in four years. But I loved practice. I had a great seat for the game. <laughs> right there by coach, went right by scorer's table. What I didn't know was how much the mission of Newman was affecting me. You see, I was changing from a centered view of myself to an outward-looking view of the world. Yes, I wanted to make a difference. Yes, the sisters did affect me. I thank you for that. Just a side note. The same Sister Dolores, we called her Sister Library at that time. <laughs> I'm coming out of the library one day because I spent a lot of time there because Brian was working there. She was coming into the library and she says, go win that game tonight. I said, oh, Sister, you mean play hard and play our best game? She says, nope. I mean, you need to win that game tonight. I said, okay, Sister, we'll, we'll do that. So the nuts like to win, too, no doubt about that. <laughs> But today, Newman's mission statement, part of it says, to empower students to transform society. Isn't that what we're talking about tonight? Isn't that what the award winners tonight are doing? I've got to tell you a little bit how my, my time on the board started. Sister Tarsisi called me up and says, can I come talk to you? I said, sure. She says, I'll come to your store. I said, okay. Comes back to the office. I felt she was going to ask me to serve on board, and I was on enough board, I was going to say no. Well, I joined Newman's board in 1989. <laughs> and there's no saying no to Sister Garcia. Yeah, anybody knows that. <coughs> Sister T, thank you for all your years at Newman. You've meant so much to all of us. We really appreciate it. You've meant so much to me, too. You know, some people 
steer things from the front, and some of them very quietly steer things with the rudder in the back of the ship. You never know where the ship, why the ship's moving as it is, if there's somebody gently steering that rudder in the back. One of those is Monsignor Bob Hammer. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. But he's one of those guys. He's in that, kind of in the background, gently steering the rudder. I was sitting in a Newman board meeting, minding, minding my own business, and I was in the back row, far away from the action. And he nominated me for board chair. I was speechless. As most of you know, that doesn't happen very often, if ever. But I just want to say thank you to Monsignor for having faith in me. I want to say thank you to him for all that he does for the Diocese of Wichita and for our Catholic faith. A lot of people don't know that. But he does so much. So much team building. So much empowering. Just, he's just a great man. When we were looking for a president of Newman, John Marshall, through a connection with Vera and Steve Robel, found Dr. Noreen Karoche in Mobile, Alabama. But we're having a hard time trying to convince her to come up to Kansas to Newman University. Monsignor wrote one of the most eloquent and persuasive email letters in the history of recruiting, <laughs> which I still have a copy today. I think Noreen saw his copy too. And that's how copy not if anybody would like to read it. It really is. So well written. It worked. Dr. Karochi came here and immediately embraced the mission of the sisters and of Newman. Ken Blanchard, author, author of The One Minute Manager, says, There is a difference between interest and commitment. When you're interested in doing something, you do it only when it's convenient. When you are committed to do something, you accept no excuses, only results. What a perfect description of Dr. Crouch. She is a dynamic, energetic, and committed president of Newman University. Noreen, it was a joy to work with you for four years as your board chair. Absolutely love her. I told her everybody had the easiest job in the world with Noreen as president. I'm going to tell you something, Noreen. you got to dream big. Dream big as you take on this task of building this much-needed science center. Sisters always say, God will provide. <laughs> there you go. But a five or ten million dollar gift wouldn't hurt anything either, would it? <laughs> Just throwing it out there. In closing, I'd like to thank the board of directors for this award. A heartfelt thanks to the ASCs for your passion and commitment to them. Thank you to the faculty which educated me, my wife, three of my four sons, and a lot of my friends. And thank you to the staff for supporting that to make it all happen. I absolutely love Newman's mission statement. If I can read it for you now, I'll close with it. Newman University is a Catholic university named for John Henry Cardinal Newman and founded by the doors of the blood of Christ for the purpose of empowering students to transform society. Thank you.